Comics on Location. Hey, welcome to another Comics on Location video. I'm in uh, South London, the outskirts practically. We're in uh, Eltham, and I'm going to show you this comic, the mystery comic book that I did from a couple of hauls ago. Where it's the first one of this that I've got, and there's got a very this comic book character's got a very strong connection to this part of London because they were born here. Can you guess who it is? Uh, I'll be showing you some, some clues, maybe, and uh, yeah, I'll show you where they were born. But what comic book is it? Can you guess what comic book it is? Write your, write your guesses in the comments. See if you're correct. Okay, so this building here is a little clue. It's a theatre. Eltham Little Theatre, it says on that side. But, <laughs> I'm going to try and hide the name because, you know, I don't want you to know the identity of this comic book just yet. <laughs> so it's just a little theatre. If you see that sign over there, it's got a clue on it. So it's a little theatre named after this particular chap. Okay, due to some poor signage, uh, we missed the road, but this should be it now. It's uh, Craigton Road, apparently, although the sign doesn't say that. Uh, and we we're coming up to it now. Hopefully this is it. I reckon that's it. Is it all, you see the bed around to the right? So... <laughs> isn't it, then I... I don't know. No, one of these is. has to be. So this is Well Hall Parade, which is confusing. And this must be here though. Here we go. Yeah, that's what I just said. We are Craigton Road, SE9. This chap whose old home we are visiting was born May the 29th 1903 and was named Leslie. The son of a stonemason, he was the fifth of seven brothers. He grew up poor and at the age of four his family relocated to America, settling in Cleveland, Ohio. He worked a number of jobs before getting his break in vaudeville, which led to Broadway, radio and then film and television work.
Okay, so here we are at the location. I wanted to just do a quick film because it is someone's house, so I feel a bit, <laughs> a bit awkward about going up to it. But uh, if I can get it in on this side of the road. Here we have the blue plaque for Bob Hope. He was lived there at some point. This is the British Film Institute's centenary of British cinema commemorative plaque in his memory. He was born here May the 29th, 1903. He died at the age of 100 on July the 27th, 2003. His career spanned almost 80 years and included appearances in over 70 short and feature films starring in 54 of them. These included seven Road 2 movies with Bing Crosby. Hope hosted the Academy Awards show 19 times, more than any other host. He also appeared in many stage productions and television roles and wrote 14 books. The song, Thanks for the Memory, was his signature tune. He was praised for his comedic timing, specialising in one-liners and rapid-fire delivery of jokes that were often self-deprecating. Between 1941 and 1991, he made 57 tours for the United Service Organizations, USO, entertaining military personnel around the world. In 1997, Congress passed a bill that made him an honorary veteran of the armed forces. So here we are, this is, uh, this is where Bob Hope was born many, many years ago. It gives me the opportunity to show my one and only Bob Hope comic that I got recently. In this comic, which I just read on the bus coming up here, he, uh, he has a dabble in his one called Nostradamus, which uh, Higgy Pop knows all about Nostradamus. But yeah, it was a fun comic and uh, it's the only Bob Hope I've got so far, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll get more in the future. Anyway, cheers for watching. This is Comics on Location. And uh, if you want to film some Comics on Location sometime in the future, then feel free to do so. Cheerio. This is The Adventures of Bob Hope, number 61, from March 1960. Never mind the fortune, Dad. There are some things one can never find in a crystal ball. Rough! <laughs> in this story, Bob stumbles upon and blags a job as a reporter. He is sent to interview the reclusive Nostradamus. After a few scrapes, he's allowed in, and the fortune teller tells him that his powers only work when he has a cold. Thinking that Bob is Dharma, some hoods kidnap him to make use of his predictive powers for gambling purposes. Despite his protestations, they refuse to believe that he is not the precognitive seer. Trying to delay, Bob says he can only see the future when he has a cold, so they promptly douse him with ice water buckets and set him to work. Bob has to go with sheer guesswork and is told that if his predictions fail, it won't go well for him. He tries to escape, but they stop him and we find out that by some miracle he got all five winners. A lady reporter turns up, thinking he is Nostradamus, to interview him, and may escape, but are recaptured. Nostradamus then turns up to give him a month's worth of winners, but then the mobsters find out that he is Bob Hope after all, and let him go. Now in possession of a month of surefire bets, but with no money with which to gamble, Bob borrows from his landlady, only to later discover that Darmus' predictions would not be accurate as his cold was cleared up when he made them. The last panel sees him sleeping in a lion cage to escape his landlady's wrath. So there you have it, it's Bob Hope. He's got his own little theatre here named for him. It's a little Bob Hope theatre, also known as Eltham Little Theatre. I'm not sure what shows are on. Let's see what the sign says. So... So shut during August. Oh no, Tuesdays and Fridays. But I can't see any signs saying what, what shows are being on being put on here at the moment. But anyway, there's the Bob Oak Theatre. <laughs> What's that? That's probably got really bad uh, really bad footage there. God, I really need to bring, really bring my What is up here with this? Why is it zoomed in? So there you go, there's Bob Hope Theatre. Uh, there's some sign up here about something. Musical Memories. The Wedding Singer, coming in October at the Bob Hope Theatre. A musical comedy. It's a Wonderful Life, coming in November. Tickets are only 14 quid. 
Such is the financial state of some of Britain's small theatres these days that it's a difficult business ensuring there are enough lights even for Bob Hope. Yet, by any standards, his homecoming was a remarkable one. He may have left Eltham when he was only four, but he's never lost his affection for the place, nor, it appears, have the people here for him. Last time he came to Craigton Road, he didn't find this kind of reception at the front gate. Oh, but it seems you've found the right house this time. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Do you know, the, you know that? You know about that? The last time I was here, I went to 25. Did you? No yeah, one? Yeah, I, I thought it was up. 25, and the people came to the door and just stared at me. Thank you very much. Thank you. How do you do, fellas? This is Bob. This is Bob, Command Performance Hope, telling each Nazi that's in Russia today that Crimea doesn't pay. <laughs> I'm now getting my material from H.V. Coltenborn. <laughs> well, I'm a little tired tonight. I just got back from Camp Roberts, drove down 200 miles in a Jeep. Tomorrow I get the order of the Purple Callus. <laughs> But I had a swell time, and I slept right in the barracks last night with the boys. You know what barracks are. That's 2,000 cots separated by individual crap games. <laughs> but anyway, let's hit the Harmony Trail to all APO and FPO numbers. For Fletch, Alfie, and Dooley, and for all of you everywhere, the girl who can diffuse a blockbuster with one kiss, Miss Betty Hutton. Hiya, fellas. And hello, Bob. Well, hiya, Betty. And say, I want to congratulate you on your big hit in our new picture. It's nice to see a youngster coming up. It's nice to see an oldster holding his own. <laughs> well, that's fine. And now, Betty, as one of the three flying Huttons, will you answer a slew of command performance requests and strafe us with that 50 caliber tune? He says, murder, he says. Thanks for the memory of sentimental verse, nothing in my purse, and chuckles when the preacher said, for better or for worse, how lovely it was. Thanks for the memory of Schubert's serenade, and little things of jade, and traffic jams, and anagrams, and bills we never paid, how lovely it was.